All right, we are going to finish the notes that we started on Friday. They are pink. They are going on page 54 with the same, with the notes that came from Thursday. On Thursday, you also got your worksheet. In most classes, I think we only got through the front of this. I think in at least one class, we did some of the back. Um, so if that is you, then you can either choose to listen to this again, which might not be a bad idea, or fast forward to where you need to be, okay? So a reminder that a geometric sequence has successive terms that have a common ratio. Common ratio. This means each term is multiplied by the same number to generate the next term. The general form of the geometric sequence is usually the best to use, and that would be this. Like I told you, there's two of them. If you only know one of them, this is the one to know. All right, so example one says find an equation for the geometric sequence. So it's telling me it's a geometric sequence. They're giving me g of three and they give me r. Well, that's what I need in here is I need a term and I need a ratio. And remember I told you to, to learn these equations and recognize the format. The more you write them, the more it's gonna be in your noggin. So we've got g sub n is equal to g sub k times r to the n minus k power. In order to have an equation for g sub n, I need a g sub k, and I need an r. So this will be my g sub k. This will be my r, which it's r, obviously. So then I substitute it in. g sub n is equal to negative 3, because that is g sub k, times r, which is 10, to the n minus k power. k is 3. So there we go. There we go. We substituted it all in, and then you can ask yourself, can I clean this up a little bit by multiplying the negative three times the ten? That's a big fat no. That's as much as we can do. Okay. All right. So let's look at example, and that's all it asked us to do was come up with an equation. Boom. We're done. All right. Let's look at example two. Example two says let G be a geometric sequence. So again, I know it's a geometric sequence. They give us a term, they give us an R value. I want to find an expression for G and use this expression to find G sub five. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna write down our standard G sub N formula. Okay, so without looking up above and without me saying anything, see if you can write it down. And then once you write it down, you can check it. And if you need to change something, then change something. But that's how you will actually learn it. All right, so once again, this will be my G sub K. This will be my R, because it's R. Then I'm going to substitute it in. So I get G sub N is equal to G sub K, which is 24, times R, which is 1 half, to the N minus 2 power. This is G sub K, 2 is K. That's my g sub n that I need. Then I also need g sub 5. g sub 5 is equal to 24 times 1 half to the 5 minus 2 power. So 5 minus 2 is 3. So I get 24 times 1 half to the third power is 1 eighth. And 24 times 1 eighth is three. There is my g sub five. So those two questions, fairly simple. I call just plug and chug problems. Like you have the term, you have the right the ratio, you just put them in there and you're done. Right? And then you can just substitute numbers in. But just like with the arithmetic, we did some like that, but we also did some where they didn't give us the common difference, but they gave us two terms. And so we're also going to have that with Geometric. So it says the examples above were relatively quick and easy because we were given one term of the sequence and the value of R. However, how can we deal with problems that give us two terms but not the value of R? We're going to do it basically the same way that we did for um, arithmetic with just a little bit of difference here. So the first thing is use both terms to create one equation. Well, that's what we did with arithmetic. But when we did that, I told you one of them was a sub n, one of them is a sub k. It makes absolutely no difference which one is which. 
Here, it makes absolutely no difference which one is which, but you can make yourself, your life easier if you use the larger k value as the g sub n term. Okay, so larger k value as the g sub n term, then that will make your life a little bit easier. Then we solve for r using the equations. That's how we did it with the arithmetic. And then we use it to write the equation. So same basic steps. We didn't even write steps out for arithmetic, I don't think. But we just need to know that the larger k value for g sub n will make our lives a little bit easier. I'll show you why on the first example here. All right, so let's look at example three. It says let g sub n be a geometric sequence, so we know that. They give me g sub 3 and g sub 6. Find an expression g sub n, and then use it to find g sub 11. So the first thing I'm going to do is write down my formula again, g sub, oops, almost put g sub k. G sub n, so you go ahead and write it down. Try to do it without looking, without me saying anything. Then you can double check yourself. G sub n equals G sub k times r to the n minus k power. All right, so we have to decide which one of these we want to be G sub n and which, we want, which one we want to be G sub k. So the larger k value, these are my k values. We want my larger k value to be G sub n. So this is going to be G sub n, and this one is going to be G sub k. So then we're going to substitute it in. So g sub n, g sub n is 128. That is equal to g sub k, which is negative 2, times r, which we don't know, to the n, which is 6, minus k, which is 3, power. So what's happening here is if I had them reversed, then I'd end up with a negative exponent, which is, again, is not impossible, and it's fine, but this will make your life a little bit easier. So I, my goal is to get r by itself. So 128, or negative 2 is being multiplied by that. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by negative 2. So that's going to give me a negative 64. And that's going to be equal to r to the third power. So here is where the calculator can come in. Now, really, we should be able to do this one by hand. I really don't think that these would be calculator problems. There's really no need to do that if you have specific numbers, but because of some of the numbers that we're going to get using the calculator, it's going to also just teach us how to use the calculator here for these things. We get, um, so undo a cube, I need the cube root. So r is equal to the cube root of negative 64. Because it's the cube root, it's totally fine, right? So let's go to our calculator. Get to the black screen. So I had to hit on get there. You're probably there. We want new. And then no if it asks you to. Mine doesn't always do that. And then we're going to add a calculator. That's all we need. So I want the cube root of negative 64, which hopefully you already know what it is. But again, we're going to talk about some calculator skills here. Unfortunately, I'm not sure that I can actually point on the calculator without pushing the buttons. I'm going to do the best I can here. Um, so if you see, if you find over here, which I think maybe you can see where I'm pointing. Um, you see you have x squared right here, and then above it is square root. Well, then you have this little carrot top, and above it you have this little weird root looking thing. I did not want equals. Sorry. See, it's really hard for me not to push buttons. Um, but I want to get the, the thing on top of the carrot top. So it's blue, so I'm going to hit control, carrot top, so I get that. That's I can put in whatever root. I think, I'm pretty sure that's an in there. It's all blurry online. So what do I want? I want the third root, because it's the cube root, right? Three goes in there negative 64 in there. And my answer is negative 4. So r equals negative 4. So now I'm going to use that to write my formula. Now, with my formula, I can use whichever one I want. We can keep it with the g sub n, or we could use the g sub k one. It doesn't matter, um, but it's... Um, I already, g sub k is already the kind of the smaller one, and that's what would go in right there. So I think I'm going to stick with that. I'd rather have that than the 128. So I'm going to have g sub n is equal to g sub k, which is negative 2, times r, which is negative 4, to the n minus 
three power because k is three. Okay. Then when I go to find g sub 11, this is equal to negative two times negative four to the 11 minus three power. Now, that's gonna give me negative four to the eighth power. Nobody's gonna ask you to do that by hand. So let's do that on the calculator. And I wanna show you, you can literally put it in the calculator exactly like that. So here I've got negative, make sure you're using the negative sign, negative two times negative four to the 11 minus three power. Notice how I didn't even do 11 minus three, so I didn't make some stupid mistake. Did that, boom, there's my answer. Negative 131,072. So G sub 11 is equal to negative 131,072. I was about to say what questions you got, but I'm not there to answer them. So, <clears throat> okay, if you need to pause and go back over the calculator stuff or whatever, go ahead and do that. Then let's move on to this one. Let G sub n be a geometric sequence. I got G sub 2, G sub 7. Find an expression for G sub n and use the expression to find G sub 11. All right. So once again, let's write down our G sub n formula. Go ahead and do that on your own. Decide which one you think should be G sub n and G sub k. Remember the bigger k value is better for G sub n. So then I challenge you to pause this and do the rest of this question and see if you got it right. If, if you did, great, you can just fast forward to the answer. If not, or if you need to hear what I've said, then you can go back and say it, but pause it and actually try it. Talk with your neighbor about it too, that's fine. All right. Hopefully you actually paused and tried this on your own. So G sub n is 1.5, that's equal to G sub k, which is 48, times r, which I don't know, to the seven minus two power. Okay, so then I need to figure out, well, I need to divide one, I'm gonna divide both sides by 48, so 1.5 divided by 48, which I can do on my calculator, 1.5 divided by 48, those types of things, Yes, you should be capable of it, but be given to you. So you're given that. Hmm. I really don't want a decimal. Now, we set these calculators to give us decimals because that's actually what we want most of the time. There are times where we want fractions. This would be one of them. So on the 84s or in the 83s that you've used in the past, remember it's math, enter, enter. It's like your favorite friend. So here, instead of math, enter, enter, it's menu two, two, and then you hit enter, and there you go. It's one over 32. Okay. So that means I get one over 32 equals r to the fifth power. So that means that r is equal to the fifth root of one over 32. Okay. I should not have all being fraction stuff here. So then I go back over here and I want the fifth root. So I'm going to do control carrot top five. And then to get a, not that I would have to right now, but as it just so that we understand how the calculator works, if I want the fraction to be in there before I start typing, I'm going to do control divide. That way I don't have to worry about what's in the numerator and what's in the denominator. So the fifth root of that, which again, we should totally be able to do by hand because you should be able to figure out the fifth root of 32. It's 0.5, but that's not what we write. We write r equals one half. So there's my r value. Now I'm going to do my g sub n. All right, so if you haven't paused yet, 
or you had to get through that part. Now pause and see if you can get the rest of this done and then come back. So G sub N equals G sub K, which is 48 times R, which is one half to the N minus two power. Okay, so then we want G sub 11. That's equal to 48 times one half to the 11 minus two power. So that would be one half to the ninth, and then I, that's a big number. Uh, well, actually, it's a small number, but you multiply it by 48. Again, I, this is not something you'd be expected to do by hand necessarily, so we are going to put this in the calculator. So I'm going to do 48 times one half to the 11 minus 2 power. And then I'm going to hit enter. And again, I don't want that number, so menu to 2 and hit enter, and it's 3.30 seconds. G11 equals 3.30 seconds. Okay, so that is it for basic arithmetic and geometric sequence review. So put this in your ISN on the same page as 54. Oh, well, maybe it's not the same page. Oh, I think I lied. I think I did 53 and 54. Maybe I put them on the same one. Oh. Okay, I just went and double checked myself. Yes, they're both go on page 54. You have the worksheet to finish and the key is over there for you to check yourself. If you finish all of that, then you can work on whatever else you don't have done, like maybe your Albert or your AP Classroom stuff, especially if you think you're going to want to retest, or maybe since so many of you were glad that you didn't have to finish the binomial theorem stuff yesterday on the test, that you uh, go get that figured out. You've got something constructive you can do if you finish this worksheet. And be good humans. <laughs>